Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and welcome to the AP Biology Lab 4 walkthrough. This is on plant pigments and photosynthesis. Uh, photosynthesis remembers how plants use energy of the sun to convert carbon dioxide into usable carbon. Uh, sugar is one thing that we need from them. So again, it's broken down into two parts. You got the light reaction, and then you have the Calvin cycle. In the light reaction, we're taking in water, we're splitting that, giving off oxygen, but we're using that hydrogen to add energy in the Calvin cycle and eventually produce things called sugar. And so I don't want to go into the specifics of photosynthesis, but know this, photosynthesis wouldn't be able to work if we didn't have plant pigments, especially chlorophyll A. And so we start this lab by doing a little bit of chromatography. In this lab, basically you're going to take some uh, chromatography paper. So it's just, it's like filter paper you cut out. This shape right here will kind of restrict the color, the pigments as they flow up. You're then gonna dip it in solvent, so you're gonna put some alcohol solvent down here on the bottom, and basically as that solvent moves up, it's gonna carry the pigments with it. Now, we're, I use spinach, so I'll take a little bit of spinach, put it down here across this uh, filter paper, then I use a quarter to grind it into the paper, and then we're gonna run the solvent through it. So basically, it's gonna to start to migrate up like this. I remember when I was a little kid, I did this with uh, water-soluble markers. So basically, it's going to move up like this. The solvent is kind of hard to see, but you'll see a faint line up here. The solvent is going to be that liquid that moves up. So we'll have the distance that the solvent moves. We could maybe measure this in centimeters. And then we're going to see each of the different pigments move up a different amount. And so basically, one thing that sometimes you have to calculate is what's called the RF value. So RF value is going to be the ratio that they move, the ratio of the pigment, divided by the solvent. And so this first one up here is going to be carotene. If I wanted to figure out the RF value, I'd figure out how far the pigment moved. So let's say the pigment right there moves around, uh, we'll say 12 centimeters. Then I figure out how much the solvent moved. The solvent moved, we'll say 13 centimeters. And then I just divide 12 by 13 and I get a number. So it's going to be a ratio. Let's say it's going to be, I have no idea, 0.9, something like that. If we look at that, carotene, then the next one, this would be actually chlorophyll A. This would be chlorophyll B. This would be xanthophylls. And so basically what you can do using chromatography is to separate it into the different pigments. Remember, chlorophyll A is that magical pigment that actually starts photosynthesis. The other ones can contribute energy to chlorophyll. LA. So what do we do in the lab setup? Well, in the lab setup, we're going to cut holes or leaf chads out of a leaf. We're going to punch those with a hole punch. We're then going to immerse them into water, but that water is going to have baking soda inside it. Function of the baking soda is to provide carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is going to be here. We put our little leaf chad in the bottom, and then we're going to put it underneath light. You can see right here in this diagram, I'm using a heat sink because we don't want to increase the amount of heat because that could be another variable that we don't want to uh, have us affect our results. So basically what's going to happen is this leaf chad down here on the bottom is going to absorb energy from the light. It's going to convert the H2O into O2, and those O2 bubbles are going to cause this to eventually uh, become more buoyant, and it's eventually going to float up to the top. And so now I've got the uh, release of oxygen gives me something, a reactant that, or a product that I can measure, and so I can measure the rate of photosynthesis, especially the light reaction. And so what do we find when we do this? Well, each of the students in my class are doing a number of different things, but let's start with color, for example. So if we did... Roy G. Biv, what I would find is that I would have a higher photosynthetic rate on the reds and the blues than I would in the greens because, again, they're not good at absorbing that amount of uh, that color of the spectrum. What about the distance to the light? Well, the farther they are away from the light, the slower it's going to occur. What about temperature? We'll find that if we increase the temperature, we're going to get an effect carbon dioxide as well, or the type of the leaf. So there's a bunch of, bunch of things that you should measure or could measure. We could graph those as uh, histograms. We could graph them if it's like increasing temperature as a line graph. But I want you to look over here because this is going to be our dependent variable. This is what we're measuring, and we're going to measure the photosynthetic rate in floats per second. In other words, that leaf chat is eventually going to float to the top. And the sooner it flows to the top, the faster the rate is. And so we measured in float how one thing floating divided by seconds is so we can get the rate. Um, and so that's basically the lab. It's a quick way to measure the light reaction. Now, one thing you should be ready for is that the College Board uh, uses a different type of lab. And in this lab, what they do is use a chemical called DPIP. DPIP is a chemical that takes the role of NADP+. So basically what it's doing is it's taking the role of this chemical right here. As it accepts hydrogen, it's going to 
um, change from a bluish color right here, in other words, as it's reduced to a clear color. And so it's going to turn to a clear color like that. And so you can measure that using one of these devices down here, a spectrophotometer. In other words, the faster it changes to that color, the faster the photosynthesis is occurring. And so it's just another thing that you should understand, another way we could measure it. Uh, they suggest you try chloroplast, uh, chloroplasts that are boiled, um, a lot of different things that we can see and how that affects the rate of photosynthesis. Uh, but again, it's something you should understand uh, because photosynthesis is really cool and I hope that helps.